HM here. Today I'm going to show you how to restore a iron cast wok. As you can see, it's uh, in a horrible condition. I know I can do it because I just restored this one iron cast pan and also I seasoned it. And now I can boil an egg in it and it will skate around like a pook in a, a hockey hole. And the hope is that I can also restore this one to the same level of perfection as this uh, iron cast pan over here. A few years back I used to do a lot of Thai food in this one, but then I came away from it. And if you don't do Thai food often, then you don't have the ingredients. So you kind of have to build up a stock of all kind of Thai stuff before you start making a lot of Thai food. But I have decided I want to go back to making some Thai foods because I think the Thai cuisine is, is a wonderful cuisine. But, but I can't do it in this wreck of a wok. But I'll see if I can restore it. I'm pretty sure I can. My plan is, I've seen a lot of videos about how to restore cast iron. And there are lots of different methods. One of the methods that should definitely work is to use vinegar. Uh, some water with ordinary vinegar and then j just let it sit in vinegar for enough time. If you do it in cold vinegar, uh, it will take longer time. I saw a video with a guy who had a lot of iron cast stuff, though totally rusty and totally red. He let it sit at outdoor temperatures in a big plastic box with vinegar and water in it for two weeks. But it was done. It was clean when he took it out. I'm not hope I don't sp need to spend two weeks here. My plan is to fill this with water and some vinegar and then boil it for half an hour. And then I'll go back into my sink here and uh, clean it as, as good as I can. The problem I have here is on the back it's also pretty disgusting. And I need to get this clean as well. And uh, you know... Boiling some vinegar on the inside it will not clean the exterior of it. But my plan again here is to uh, use this plastic box I have here and then basically put the pan into, into this plastic box with some vinegar and let it sit overnight. It will take a little while but um, this is the first process so let's get to it. Um, so I'll start here by filling this up with some water. I might as well do it with the hot water. I'm really anxious to find out how well I can restore this, whether I still have a good wok, but should be possible. It's also pretty heavy, <laughs> it's like 10 kg or something. Okay, so we just need to put some vinegar up in it. Uh, that's my vinegar, lots of vinegar, 5 liter. It's not expensive and it's not toxic or dangerous or anything, it's not bad for the environment, so I really like when you can have something that can clean and then it doesn't screw up the environment. While I'm at it, uh, maybe I should tell, say I, I have just started this YouTube channel. So you begin to think about what would look bad and, and not so good when you have a YouTube channel about cooking. Well, to have uh, pans and pots that are not tip top and that cannot pass a Gordon Ramsay test. Well, that's not very good. And I checked my pans and pots and they couldn't pass that Gordon Ramsay test, I'm pretty sure. But now I've cleaned everything and now I'm pretty sure they can pass it. All of my pots here, I bought them all like 25 years ago and have used them thousands and thousands of times. So I'd say <laughs> this is stainless steel. It's pretty good restored, it look pretty much like new and also here on the inside. The only thing is I've been scrubbing it so many times so it's not like, totally shiny. But those stainless steel pots I have, I could simply restore them completely by taking this my biggest uh, pot, which is 14 liter and 12 liter when it's not completely filled out, so you can boil some stuff in it. But it's so big that I can also put my stainless steel pots directly in it. And then I just cooked them with some uh, baking soda and that worked. It really, really worked. I had stuff I couldn't clean off, some yellow stuff up on the sides that probably f came from my gas stove and then something has settled uh, and I just couldn't get it, wash it off in my sink using soap. But this baking soda boiled in water for half an hour and then I simply, then I simply took a, a steel uh, sponge like this and scraped it all off and then I used a <laughs> a toothbrush here to get into the sides and I also have another tool that I have used and that's simply a screwdriver. Here down here there was a black rim of 
carbon stuff that was stuck over time and I simply scraped it off. So it can be done. And now they, I think they can pass a Gordon Ramsay test. Anyway, that's how you do your stainless steel pots and pans. But this video is about how to restore some iron cast which is the same way you would restore a carbon steel pan. That's another thing that's becoming popular to buy instead of cast iron because they are a little less heavy than cast iron. Anyway, you can see something is definitely happening here. It's working. There's vinegar and water in it. Now it's bubbling up before it has come to its boiling point. So it's already doing its thing. That I'm pretty satisfied with. In half an hour, it will look a lot better. But anyway, I think I'll check out and uh, we'll be back when this one has boiled for half an hour. Okay, I'm back. I decided to cook it for a lot more time than 30 minutes. I decided to give it almost two hours. Let's take a look at it. So um, it's over here and uh, I can already see now it's dark uh, and I can just see from here that it looks a lot better than before and I don't see any rust. But let's um, take these um, thing here and then let's pour the water a little bit. I hope I don't make a disaster. You know, we're not done. I also want to let it sit in this water overnight. Let's start cleaning it here. But this this water over here, I thought a little bit about how to proceed. Now you can see uh, it has to be filled up a lot more with water. And I'll do that in my bathroom. Um, so I'll just let it sit on the floor in the bathroom and then fill it up with water and also put some more vinegar in it. Uh, and then I'll just let it sit overnight in the morning I'll come back with this video and we'll see how much I can restore it further. But let's um, let's see here. Okay, it's already beginning to rust just that little time. It was actually black. Okay, but I'm just seeing how much I can get this cleaned. I can definitely see the metal now. That's a good thing. I'm going to use this. It's a sink cleaner uh, called Ajax. It's some powder with some small stones in it and soap. And it, uh, it's very good for cleaning the sink, stainless steel stuff. And I think I'm going to use that. I'm not using gloves because maybe I should. But I can see it is getting dirty, the soap here. So definitely I'm getting something off. That's not the... Okay, yeah, I definitely got something. See how dirty this was? Really dirty. That was good. That means it works. And also now it's more shiny down here. But let's turn it around and give it another scrub here. There's not much to say. It's uh, this pretty dull cleaning job that just has to be done part of life but it's very satisfying to to see it if it restores my trusted wok here so I can get started cooking some Thai dishes and other Asian dishes okay again it's really dirty it's definitely very dirty so it it's a good thing I get this done yeah it's completely changing color here. I also upgraded my studio, you could say my kitchen studio. I bought eight new lights since my first video because there was not enough light on me. I had to buy eight. So there are four extra here right now and then four over there when I'm looking into the other camera. You can never have enough light. I have 34 lights here and they all need to be connected with cables and power supplies. It's a lot. It's a lot more complicated to film this than you would expect. But okay, I'm also using free cameras. But I think this is there's not many YouTubers uh, that I have kitchen channels that are filming with a multicam setup. And also, I think I got my sound nailed down much better quality than what most other YouTubers have. 
I've spent a lot of time on the technical aspect. I have Asperger's. I can't sleep at night if I don't have that result. But now that I have solved that, we can get down to actually doing some cooking and showing some good tips about how to become better, a better home chef. And my goal is to be significantly above the average home cook. Uh, my goal is not to be a Michelin star. We don't have time for that. And, and I, I don't think it's that interesting to know what a Michelin star does because, you know, it's something that they only can do. It's not something everybody can do. But I think these tips uh, for everyday use in the kitchen to enrich your life with better food and more healthy food and also cheaper food because funny enough some of the most healthy food is the least costly because you do it more from basic uh, raw materials and that's a lot more healthy instead of buying processed food that's not healthy and that costs a lot more now this pan is getting a lot better i can see it it's just getting better oh yeah Take a look at it. Years and years of wear has is coming off now. I think I'm done here. I've done in first phase, which was just giving it an acid bath and then scrubbing it off. As I said, I will fill this plastic thing up with water, add more vinegar, and then I'll be back. Okay, it's the next day, and this pot here, let me take it up so you can see it. I just took it out of the acid bath, so it has been almost 22 hours or so in this vinegar bath. I managed to get it fully submerged. Also, this morning I took it up of this acid bath after it has been all night in this acid. And um, I scrubbed it off, and there was a lot of dirt I could scrub off. But I'll scrub it off one more time here, and then we'll see if it's ready for some seasoning. I've already turned on the oven because I kind of anticipate that that I can um, that I can finish it now. So that was that side. Let's go to this side. I don't think it doesn't look very dirty anymore. Uh, so it seems like this acid bath um, with vinegar there did the trick. I like my scrubbing powder better than this stuff here. Let me use my old product here again. Much better. Yeah, you know, I, I think I'm done. I'm not going to put oil on it until it has been completely dried and I'll dry it in the oven here. Hundred and ninety degrees Celsius or three hundred and seventy five degrees Fahrenheit. That's the temperature of my oven. And it's a temperature I'm going to use also for seasoning my uh, wok. There are a lot of videos about seasoning out there, and they put it in, a, in an enormously hot oven. That will not give a good seasoning. That will actually ruin the seasoning. Then you will burn the oil. Actually, one of the methods to get rid of a seasoning or a failed seasoning is to put your stuff in an oven and then put it in this cleaning mode where it goes to ballistic degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and, and basically burn everything off. Uh, and I'm going to tell you one secret. It's not a secret, but it's something I discovered the hard way by accident. I had done this iron cast thing here and I tried with oil to boil an egg and it's still stuck. It didn't stuck a lot, but it did stick and that just couldn't be. Then I began to test all kind of oils and then I tested butter. Butter! Butter is non-stick. It's far, far more non-stick than anything else. And then I thought, okay, so butter is non-stick, but what if you use clarified butter where you have removed all the proteins and water and salt? And then I made clarified butter, and I'll make a video about making clarified butter. This is clarified butter. It's slightly brown because you caramelize some of the stuff there is in the butter, and then it has a slight caramel taste, a really nice taste and then it's butter. But clarified butter here, or ghee, if you burn it a little more, we, we will call it a ghee. It's enormously good at non-stick. If you put that on this iron cast pan, or just butter, but especially this one, then I promise you it won't stick. And I also tested this one out on my stainless steel pan. I have never ever been able to cook an egg th without sticking it on my stainless steel pan. But now, with this, no problem. It won't stick. And I have this pan here. 
This is so amazing. This is a great pan. There's also copper on it. And I'll make a video about how to maintain copper pan, how to clean that up. It's actually a little bit, it's not as 100% tip top, this copper here. So I'll show you how to get it to 100%. Anyway, if you have a cleaned stainless steel and you use this ghee, you can fry an egg and this egg will, will skate around on your pot here like a puck in a skating hole. It's great. I, I'm so glad I discovered that. But um, I think this one is hot enough now. So let's get, get it out. Start using that and it's canola oil, so it's the right oil. Um, I'm going to grease now. So let's do that. Let's turn it around. So the idea is grease this in with this canola oil, then dry it up. It has to be a thin layer and then I'll bake it for one and a half hour. Uh, I was told that the longer you bake it, especially when you go at these lower temperatures, um, you need to bake it for a long time um, to be sure that this seasoning is transforming the oil into some polymers that create this non-stick layer and also protect iron cast piece here against rust. We don't want to, to have it to rust again, but it looks pretty good. And now I'm going to use this, this paper here. This was soaked with oil and I'm going to dry, dry, take off as much oil as I can with this paper here that's not soaked with oil. And then I'm going to bake it. Let me turn it around, take all this oil up again, everything we can. There's a lot of work maintaining these iron cast pots and pans, so I, I can only recommend that you buy stainless steel. Stainless steel, it's not as heavy, and if you have this ghee, or clarified butter, I promise you, you can roast anything in those stainless steel and it will not stick. There's also another thing, I cannot do a dish with tomato in this wok or any iron cast pot or, or pan, because then it will ruin the seasoning and then it will become stick again if you put anything as acidic in it. And there's a lot of dishes that has acidic things in them, so my idea is I'm just going to do some tight dishes in this wok and for this iron cast pan I have here which is so beautiful you can see it's really done well has been restored super well I'm just doing pancakes that's something I do anyway the non-stick feature of having a, an iron cast is definitely better than it is for stainless steel so that it has that advantage over stainless steel but it also is a lot more work but I think we are done here. So let's uh, put it in the oven. I'm putting it in uh, upside down, so if there's any oil, then it can drip down out of it. Um, but I'll be back and we'll see if I have succeeded. Okay, now a uh, day has passed. Last night I seasoned my wok here twice in the oven. And then today I have done it four more times in the oven. So basically how do, do I do it? I oil it all in, all in uh, with lots of oil. Then I take a dry uh, uh, paper towel here and then I clean every all the oil off as much as I can. And then I put it into the oven, bake it for one and a half hour, take it out. And then I repeat the process. And now I have done it. You can see it here, it's probably not the best camera. I've done it about six times, six, seven times. Uh, it's definitely a lot better to the feel. Maybe we should have this camera here. It feels a lot smoother. Now I felt it for each time been in the oven and it got a little smoother every time. That's why I kept doing it. But I must say, I have probably used too much time on this uh, or most definitely have it's not worth it uh, spending that much time but now i i know i can do it or do i because we need to do the egg test i have another iron cast pan over here and it's just so much more smooth it's like buttery smooth and like a the skin of a baby it's really nice to the feel this one not so much but of course I can see why this is a cheap pan. It's probably $20, $30 or something brand new. 
This one I paid more for. I can't quite remember. It's over 20 years I bought both of these. But one thing I discovered and why I know I can use this going forward is that it has this lid that I'm using also for this part over here. It has this lid and I uh, thought to myself, well, this is a perfect Dutch oven. If not for anything, then I can use this as a perfect Dutch oven. It has about nine centimeters here and another eight centimeters here. So you can have a bread baked here on some baking paper. You put that one in, into the oven, heat it up. Then you make your bread on a baking paper lift that bread down into this red hot wok, put this lid on and then put it into the oven. That would be a perfect Dutch oven. When I bought this and I made a lot of Thai food, I didn't bake bread at that time, but I do now. And of course, this is my Dutch oven. Uh, so I definitely know I'll, I'll use this for future bread making as a Dutch oven. But let's see, let's bring it to the test now. I'll put some heat on here and let's see if I have done my job good. I'll do three tests. I'll start out with the most non-stick fat I know exists because I made some tests that confirms that. This is clarified butter or ghee. If you have burnt it a little more, then it's a little more brown than this. It's the first time I made this myself. I'm kind of new to that and I'm glad I have found out how to use it because it is non-stick big time. And it also, it, it is made from butter. It's easy to make and it smells heavenly good. Some people say it's a nutty taste to it. That's not true. It's caramel taste. And it's obvious uh, why it's caramel taste, uh, because you have caramelized some of the sugars in the butter. Okay, it's um, getting hot here. Anyway, it's heating up. Let's uh, take the temperature. One of the good things actually about this iron cast that is dark is that you can take the temperature. Now it's 120 degrees Celsius. 250 degrees Fahrenheit. You can take the temperature here because it's black and this uh, gun here, temperature measurement uh, thing, it works best on black surfaces. If I try to take the temperature in my stainless steel pans, it doesn't work. Okay, but let's see it. And I'll turn the heat down immediately. I'll just uh, throw this egg out here. Let it sit and boil a little bit. Normally you should just wait a little bit to let the protein release again from the, uh, from the pan. It sticks. No. Does it? Uh, let's wait a little more. If it sticks, I'm really disappointed. And then it's, it's pointless to go on with butter and also with ordin no ordinary vegetable oil to see if it, uh, another egg I could fry with that would also stick because I know that's more sticky. But then I still got a Dutch oven if it fails. There's a little bit of stickiness to it, but not much. But in a stainless steel pan I can do this better. Now it's released. And by the way, it's pretty heavy. I have to use uh, this. No. What can I say? It should glide around uh, and it doesn't. God damn it. <coughs> this is hopeless. Okay, but that's a, an honest attempt to do this. Uh, I'd say this is too bad a quality of an iron cast thing. I can, it's, this one over here is definitely non-stick, but it also feels sm uh, butterly smooth. This one, I will only be able to use it as a Dutch oven. I don't even want to cook on it when things stick like that and I've done all that seasoning. Jesus Christ. Let me turn it around here. That was a little bit disappointing. But anyway, if you had a better quality iron cast pan, then this would have worked because I've done it with this one. And it's definitely non-stick. I think it's done. Okay, now I'm back at this project for restoring my iron cast wok and I finally succeeded with it. Uh, what happened was that after cleaning it down completely, having it cooked in vinegar, 
having it submerged in vinegar for almost 24 hours. And also during that time, I cleaned it down, scrubbed it down, everything so to get all the rust and all the dirt off. Then I took my pan, greased it in with the canola oil, baked it for one and a half hour in the oven, took it out, let it cool down, put canola oil again on it and baked it again in the oven for one and a half hour. I repeated that over two days for maybe seven times. Then I made a video here trying now that was done. I had finally seasoned it correctly and so forth. And I was frying an egg on it just to prove that it worked. And it didn't work. The egg got stuck. And I got kind of mad at my frying pan first. But then I realized, man, it's me. You have done something wrong, obviously. It's you. It's not the frying pan. I was almost at the point of throwing this wok out and just forget about it. It's too much work. It really is too much work, but I, you know, I want to know how to make it work. I just want to know. I need to know that. So uh, I tried once more. I'd seen some videos with some who did a seasoning trick where they put it on the stove and had greased it all in, and then they heated the pan up until it reached the smoking point, and you can actually see the fat smoking off. Just the first smoke coming off the pan, then they turned the heat down. So I did that and also I used clarified butter for my fat because when I did that I let it smoke just a little bit, turn off the heat and then I did my frying egg test and lo and behold it skated around. Also let's take a look at this. The texture of my wok here got much more smooth and nice to the touch. Now I can touch it, it feels like baby skin. That only happened after I did this thing on the stove where I heated the pan up to the smoking point of, of the oil I had greased it in and then turned the heat down immediately. Then the whole thing was changed after that. It was smooth and black like it is right here. You can see it's super smooth and black. And this over here that I restored this one but it's a better quality pan so it was kind of easier to restore. Here the iron cast is kind of smooth from the very way this has been made it's really a good quality pan also you can see that it has been machined uh, after the casting it has been machined totally nicely whereas over here here they machined it fine over here you can see it's it's not machined very great it's like you can see it's just a cheap make this one much better quality and this one my egg is floating around easily it doesn't stick but then i did i thought maybe i should season it one more time and it would get even better seasoning i did that and then i put my egg on again to see if it was still good and then it stuck a little bit and then i thought man it shouldn't do that i've done everything right with the seasoning why does it stick just a little bit and then i thought okay maybe the temperature wasn't right when i put that egg on and um then I did some experiments, and yes, it was the temperature. It really is important that you heat up the pan to a particular degree. Now I'll just bring my phone back. There's a so-called Leidenfrost point. It's uh, 379 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's uh, 193 degrees Celsius. At that point, when you throw water on the pan, it will skate around, and it will create a little steam barrier between the pan and the water drop itself so it can skate around for quite a while before it evaporates if it's lower than that temperature the water will just uh, float out in the pan and evaporates pretty quickly and if much higher than that temperature it the, the water will kind of now explode and and fly away so if you can just take a temperature measurement temperature of your pan and then wait until it gets to those 379 Fahrenheit or 193 uh, Celsius. And then you put on your egg. Then it will all work. So let's do that. Let's heat this up and I'll prove to you this works. It will take a little while. There's a lot of iron cast in this. So it will take a little while for this one to heat up. Uh, so yeah, it's a little energy intensive to boil an egg in this one. But it's the only way I can test that. I've actually succeeded in, in making a, a thing here that works. Let's put some butter in it. Let's take the temperature. So it's 130 degrees Celsius. That would be 260 degrees Fahrenheit. It has to, to heat up a little more. 
let me spread that butter. And now we are getting there. I'm getting some temperature readings out 170 degrees Celsius. We are very close now. And it, but the bubbles are almost gone here. 180. I think we are there. And then I turn down the, actually I totally turn off the heat because there's so much heat in this uh, thing that it will be just fine. But I can already see it's non-stick. It's definitely non-stick. So let's take, let's see if we can shake the pan here and smoke it around. Yeah, we can. Take a look at that, isn't that beautiful? Success, success. Now I can sleep. I have Asperger's. If I have things I haven't figured out, then I can't sleep until I've figured it out. That's how it is. But I turned off the heat, and also I want to have it boil a little bit on top. There's one way to, to do that. That is to put some water in, in the just a little bit of water, and now let me find. Every wok has a good lid here that can be put on top, of course, and then you can steam the 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 thing here. Now I'm steaming it, putting a little bit of water on. I think I need to add a little bit of heat, and then the egg will be perfect. Now I can take the temperature of this one to see if it's steamed. It should be 100 degrees. It's not there yet. It's a little hard to take the temperature on a reflective surface. And it, it is working. Yeah, it will get boiled. It works. Okay, I think it's done. Yeah, it's done. So let's take it off. Here we go. So that's my beautiful egg here. It's done and it's also crispy here on the edges. That's how I like it. Let me show you how to clean this stuff. So I'll just show you here. I put some water in it. It's actually cold water. It is because the pan is pretty hot and I want it to cool down. Then I take a very stiff brush. You can hear how stiff it is. But it's still plastic, it, it won't hurt the the seasoning and then I basically scrub it and that's how I, I would clean it. You can see how the water basically glide off the side, it doesn't stick and that's why, how you know the, that this seasoning is super duper. It's still very hot, the pans so I have to take a little care. Give it a good scrub here but you can see how the, the water just peels off. That's a good non-stick pan. And then I just take my towel here. I don't press very hard down because there's this grease in it. I don't want my towel to be greased up, but I want that grease to still sit on the pan. So now I just remove the water. Any water on the back side? There is, of course. Here on the back side, I'll tell you, you can see there are, this is, this is basic, it has been seasoned because I baked it in the oven, but this is places where this seasoning is definitely burnt and ruined, but that's unavoidable, it will happen, and yes, it will rust here, it will begin to rust here, but I don't care too much, it's on, on the other side of the pan, what I really care about is how it is on this side where I cook my food. So this, this is just something you have to live with, I think, when you have an iron cast pan. It will be a little bit rusty on the other side. But I think that's enough for this video. I've shown that I know how to restore an iron cast piece, both a wok and also my frying pan over here. Uh, but what I also want to say is that I'm not going to use this a lot. I've decided to buy a Le Creuset, also iron cast wok, that has this emulate, what is the English word for it, you know what I mean, uh, treatment. So it doesn't have 
direct exposure to the iron. The problem with any iron cast pan and also steel stillets, um, they have to be seasoned and that seasoning is ruined if you do anything acidic in your food and you do that a lot of times. That means you ruin your seasoning all the time. It's just, and then you have to apply the seasoning again. It's just a lot of work and I don't want to spend my life on it. But it's great to have the iron cast. They have a lot more heat retention and that's good to cook with. With that said, I think I will finish this video. It's already been a long video, but I hope you found some useful tips. I've done all the errors that could happen in this and I've fixed them and I know now exactly what went wrong and what works and I'm happy I did it. After all, now I can sleep. So uh, goodbye and uh, please subscribe to my uh, channel and uh, give it a like if you thought it was useful for your own cooking. Thank you very much. Goodbye.